Hello, today I am going to cover clause 751 general, which doesn't tell us a lot, um, with regards to documented information. What I'm sharing with you is the clause statement from 9001, ISO 9001, and you'll see it's 7.5 documented information, and it's just this general clause. You will have found, if you've gotten this far through the standard already, that there's quite a few clauses that do have at the commencement of each like sub clause, a general clause. And it really just gives us an idea of what it's about, what's coming up essentially. This one is a little bit different. I think it's really a really important clause because it explains to us in a little bit more detail the requirements for documented information that are mandatory and then anything else, any other documented information that we require. So I'll explain it to you. So it says the organisation's quality management system shall include A, documented information required by this international standard. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So wherever you have seen in ISO 9001 where it states that documented information is to be retained or maintained or be available, well, you have to do it. Okay, It's spelt out for you in the standard. There's quite a few um, clauses throughout that require documented information. So this is just simply saying, well, if it says that you need documented information in a clause, well, you shall include it, okay? It's a requirement. Now, it goes on to B where it says, documented information determined by the organisation as being necessary for the effectiveness of the quality management system. I'll say it again, emphasising different words. So it says, documented information determined by the organisation as being necessary for the effectiveness of the quality management system. Right, so this clause is saying, well, one, you need to have what we say you have to have documented, that's A, but then in B it says, well, if you believe that documented information will support your system to ensure that your quality management system is effective, well then you will have it as well. You will create it, you can create it. So if we're looking at this from the perspective of say um, a hierarchy of control, we all know documentation is part of the hierarchy of control. It's a lower level control, but to maintain consistency, maintain consistency of output. And in particular, this is quality. So this is about the output and the service that we provide to our customers. We want that consistent output, don't we? So there might be some clauses within the standard where it doesn't specifically say you shall maintain documented information or you shall retain documented information, but that doesn't mean you can't have it, okay? If you think it will support your system, if you think, oh, we need to have this procedure um, documented so people can follow it, or we might need a checklist here to ensure that everyone that touches this process does and follows the same steps, well then you do it, okay? This is all about making your system more sol like solid, okay? Mature, robust is probably the better word, okay? Now, some of you might think, oh well, if it doesn't say I have to have documentation, well, I'm not doing it. Well, that's fair enough, <laughs> that, that's, that's your choice, however, I will point out that what you might find is that those are the steps in your process or the areas in your system that you might end up with non-conformances. You might end up with um, customer complaints or feedback. Okay, So it will come around full cycle. 
All right, so if you have missed an area that may benefit from documented information being retained or maintained, then you might come full circle if there is a non-conformance or a complaint and you might decide at that point, yeah, you know what, this might be more manageable if we have a procedure or if we have a checklist. All right, so that's sort of the mindset that you need for B. Now, to finish off, there is a note at the end of clause 751. And the note says, the extent of documented information for a quality management system can differ from one organisation to another due to the size of the organisation, its type of activities, processes, products and services, the complexity of processes and their interactions and the competence of persons. Okay, so this is really important to understand. There will be a different level of documentation depending on the size of the business. All right, so if we're talking an international or global business with tens of thousands of employees scattered all over the world, we would tend to expect much more documentation, okay, because there's, there's a lot more to try to control and manage as compared to a family business that has one, one location and it's just, say, the husband and, husband and wife running the business. They would have far less documentation requirements because they would be working together and the communication would be on the go and verbal. Okay? I'm not saying that they wouldn't benefit from having some additional areas as per B documented. However, they, we would expect for them to have less areas documented than an international global company. So that's that size of the business. And of course, if it's a, a complex or a high risk product or service that you deliver, again, you would tend to have a lot more documentation because as I mentioned before, this is a control essentially. Okay, so more complex or higher risk products and services will tend to have more documentation than a lower risk product or service. All right, I hope that helps you and have fun with documented information. Thank you.